If we stopped in our tracks halfway through this effort or two thirds through this effort, this virus is going to come back with a vengeance. Governor Jay Inslee is responding to those who say they want to reopen the state right now. Just a few hours ago, he addressed the state on Washington steps to reopen. Good evening and thank you for joining Krem 2 News at 6. I'm Mark Hanrahan. It is a big day for the state of Washington. Phase one of the governor's plan to reopen the state got underway today. Meantime, we continue to keep our distance here at Krem 2. So myself, along with Chief Meteorologist Tom Sherry, broadcasting from our homes. Meantime, our Whitney Ward back at the studio. Whitney. Hi, Mark. Good to see you. Yes, a very big day for Washington as phase one of a four part plan to reopen Washington officially begins. So starting today, you can now visit several state parks, county and city golf courses also back open today and starting early next week, several businesses or industries will be allowed to start back up. That includes auto sales, retail that can provide curbside pickup, car washes, landscaping, housekeeping and pet walking. Now we know we're only starting to reopen very slowly, but Spokane area mayors have asked Governor Inslee to be more flexible with reopening Spokane County. For now, he is still not budging, though, on the criteria for counties to move into the next phase. So Krem 2's Amanda Rowley shares more on what that conversation was like, especially from Mayor Nadine Woodward. Governor Jay Inslee spoke with mayors in the Spokane region today about plans to reopen Spokane County. They asked the governor to move Spokane into phase two earlier than the rest of the state, based on the latest data. But Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward says he is sticking to the variance criteria of no new cases in a county for the next three weeks. We didn't necessarily get the answer we wanted today. But those conversations will continue. Woodward says she believes the Spokane region has already hit the benchmarks necessary to reopen. We're seeing new cases in single digits uh, for a county with a half million population. And um, we've had no new deaths. Um, we have 10 people in the hospital right now. Right now, the governor's office is looking at the number of COVID-19 cases in a county, but Woodward believes counties should be considered for early reopening based on deaths and hospitalizations, especially since Spokane's data is showing no spikes. Mayor Woodward adds the Spokane region is finalizing its collaborative plan on how it would reopen. It will be presented to Governor Inslee next week. Spokane City Council President Brian Beggs also sat in on this call today. He confirmed with me the City Council gave a draft resolution to the mayor's office today on how the city would reopen. We really want to get to what are the practical things that need to happen. And it's testing, it's contact tracing, it's uh, personal protective equipment, it's um, COVID inspectors that can come to each business and advise them. He says in general, city council and the mayor's office have the same goal to reopen. It's expected to vote on the resolution at the next Monday council meeting. Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. So Governor Inslee today says we still have a long way to go in this battle against COVID-19, though he did announce steps to move forward. And Regina Ahn is now live in the newsroom with more on what he said today. Regina. Whitney, Governor Inslee says he's bringing on advisory groups, which would focus on different aspects of the state's recovery from the coronavirus crisis. And here are the three advisory groups laid out. First, a public health and healthcare system. This will be led by the Department of Health Secretary John Wiseman. The group will focus on broadening test efforts and to prepare for a vaccine. Then the safe work and economic recovery. This will be led by State Commerce Director Lisa Brown. The group will focus on phased recovery plans and business and worker assistance. Finally, there are social supports led by the Department of Social and Health Services Secretary Cheryl Strange. The group will focus on food, safe shelter, housing, health care and equity. Governor Inslee says by the end of the week or early next week, there will be good protocols in place for the opening of certain businesses with safety as a top priority. He says Washington is days away from other businesses opening up. And here's what he had to say to those who are currently going against these guidelines, saying they want the economy to open up sooner. I think they are not only short-sighted but dangerous. They are not compliant with the science that is very clear on this, that if we today released all of our efforts, if we stopped in our tracks halfway through this effort or two-thirds through this effort, this virus is going to come back with a vengeance. And apparently those politicians 
far as I can tell, that doesn't bother them too much. But when you see the tears of the families that have lost 800 people, I think you'd reach a different conclusion. And the governor adding he doesn't know when the go button will be pushed for the next steps. But with the help of these groups, Washington will be better prepared and will know the best way to go about doing that in the future. Governor Inslee says we need to keep our eyes on the prize, be confident and know that our state is making very good progress. He adds that the goal is to get the curve down and most importantly, keep it there. Live in the newsroom tonight, Regina on Whitney, back to you. All right, Regina, thank you very much. Some Washington gyms not uh, not following the rules when it comes to refunding monthly membership dues during this stay home, stay healthy order. So this is an email that we received a few weeks ago about the Northside Spokane Fitness. Members contacted Krem saying Spokane Fitness was only offering credit despite the Attorney General's announcement that gyms are required to give you your money back if you ask. This is a Facebook post from the gym saying those credits would be applied to the end of your membership. So I read reached out to the club asking why they were not abiding by the attorney general's mandate of honoring refunds. Spokane Fitness quickly responded to us here at Krem saying we have brought back a team of employees to handle our members questions and issues. We have abided by the attorney general's letter and have been issuing refunds to the members requesting it. If our team made a mistake or error, they say we will correct it immediately. So just know gyms are required to give you your money back for as long as you ask for it. If you have any other issues like this, you'd like the Krem to investigators to look into, just let us know by email or you can find us on Facebook and Twitter. Well, there is a new study from the University of Washington that again is predicting a huge increase in the number of deaths from this coronavirus. Now the second increase they're predicting and Mark, this one is a very big one. It is a big number indeed. Whitney, less than a week ago, that team of researchers predicted 72,000 Americans would die from COVID-19 by August 4th. Well, now that same team is predicting that number could nearly double to 132,000 if strict measures like social distancing are eased. This as at least 43 states have now partially reopened their economies. From the public health point of view, namely, there will be more deaths. This rise of mobility in the last week or 10 days is likely leading to some increased transmission. In New York City, where more than 200 people are dying daily, the state is shutting down the subways for the first time ever tonight and every night after that so trains can be disinfected. Employees at Tyson's Fresh Meats in Walla Walla County are heading back to work. This after that plant was temporarily shut down back on April 23rd to test all employees. There have been 147 positive results of the 1,239 tests returned so far. At least 104 workers were diagnosed with the coronavirus before testing began. During the time of closure, employees self-isolated at home while receiving pay. Tyson has had made had multiple rather coronavirus outbreaks all across the country. OK, let's pause and talk the forecast for a moment because it was a beautiful day here in the inland northwest today, but some rain and wind are moving in for tomorrow. Let's get straight to Chief Meteorologist Tom Sherry for more on that. Tom. Yeah, we are looking for uh, wind and rain and cooler temperatures to move in on Wednesday, but it's all going to clear out nicely and we'll enjoy a beautiful weekend, uh, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And of course, Sunday, Mother's Day weekend. Let's get right to it, Mark. Let me show you a Pacific satellite view. You can see that comma, that uh, uh, cloud cover offshore. That's what's headed our way. We could see wind gusts tomorrow up to 40 miles per hour. Heavy, heavy rain. Some computer estimates have it anywhere between a quarter inch to a half inch of rainfall. When will be the heaviest rain be in the early morning hours? So look for an overnight low of 47 with increase in clouds. I mean, gosh, I'm looking at the sky right now. Blue sky, not seeing much at all in the way of cloud cover, but it will arrive. So letting you know about that. Matter of fact, a little bit later on, I'll run the future tracker for you and you'll see exactly hour by hour when it should rain. Uh, 73 expected on your Saturday, 76 on Mother's Day. Plenty of sunshine to enjoy. Please stick around. I've got to look at your 10 day forecast. Also, I want to I want to run that uh, future tractor computer model for you as well. Back to you. All right, Tom, looking forward to that. Thank you very much. OK, still ahead tonight. New studies are showing that cases of COVID-19 can be more severe in certain cases in children. What you can keep an eye out for when we come back. And before we head to the break, want to continue highlighting our seniors tonight. We want to give a shout out to Jacob Jones. 
He's a senior at Colville High School. We love giving a shout out to our seniors. So keep sending in your photos. Text 2020 to 509-448-2000 and we'll send you the submission link.